This program is designed to provide general information with regards to the subject matters covered. This information is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, sponsors, or station are engaged in rendering any specific and personal medical, financial, legal, counseling, professional service, or any advice. You should seek the services of competent professionals before applying or trying any suggested ideas. Sebastian movie reviews and more and if it's Tuesday that means we're live once again so the, the great thing about this I love when I'm picking these shows out and these guests out months weeks and months in advance and sometimes a year in advance because I've been looking forward to this young lady for a long time she doesn't know it but I really have so one of the reasons we're on talk for TV and K4HD radio is because of this young lady over here she I have to remind her that because she does so many things let's see best-selling author Best author, let's see, Star Trek, off the top of my head, Eileen, Star Trek uh, yep. reference manual, bestseller, Waiting no, no, for no, Adam. Wait. Star Trek medical reference Medical manual. <laughs> reference manual. See, I got to, hey, it's always off the top of my head. So that's the whole thing. Okay, so let me see. Let's go from here. Celebrity correspondent. She's interviewed everybody, and I mean everybody. So, um... Magazines, Huffington Post, Get Out Magazine, uh, Louder Than War, if I remember correctly. Very let's see, good, Adam Ant, Cindy Lauper. Uh, uh, let's see, I wonder if she's done, I know she's done Rick, Spring, Rick Springfield, uh, Diana Ross, Diana uh, Ross. Annie Lennox, Jennifer Hudson, Annie Lennox, uh, Boy George. One more, Boy George. I'm going to stop right there. And the reason for that is because she's also a size queen. She's also a good friend. And you never yes. want to be on her bad side. Ever, 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 ever. So I have to have my hat come off to her because I've been wanting to have her on for a long time. So Rachel, Chef Rachel Roberts out of Houston, Texas. Howard Wiggins out of Nashville, Tennessee. Terry Marie Nonstop out of Sherman Hi. Oaks, California. The one and only, our friend, Eileen Shapiro. So Hi, Eileen, everyone. <laughs> now that Hi. I said all this stuff, I want to say this because thank you, thank you, thank you so much for introducing me to Dean because you're responsible for that. You're responsible for a lot of the people. I love Leland Scar. I love Kenny Arn. I love all the people that you have. They become personal friends, and it's because of Eileen. So with that, Eileen, let's talk about you. We don't get a chance to talk to you. Oh, and we got to mention this one too, co-owner of World Star PR. How could we forget that with Jimmy Starr, right? Kill yeah. <laughs> so there we go. All right, Eileen, what's been happening? Because how, first of all, how do you have time to write a book? I don't understand that with all the stuff that you're doing. So here's, so Rachel, you'll love this. If I remember correctly, she's got three notebooks and she is on it when it comes to her clients. She knows this stuff like the back of her hand and don't, don't mess up anything. And she will correct you if you're wrong because she is that on. She is that spot on. Aren't you, Eileen? I am. I am. Don't, me don't mess with my clients. <laughs> That's right. So, Eileen, talk about this. You were just at the, the Music Hall of Fame in New it York. Mm -hmm. So talk about who was there because I love Clive Owen. We got to talk about that. So you got a great photo with him. How did that happen? Who did you go? Did you go with Randy? I didn't go with Randy, even though Randy does believe he deserves to uh, be nominated. And maybe we'll work on that. But before I say anything, he was just nominated. Randy, to the New England Music Hall of Fame. And the cool thing about it is they only take people who were born in New England, not. But they nominated him anyway for a weekend in New England by Barry Manilow. So how cool is that? All right, tell Randy the audience Edelman. who Randy is. Because we Randy know who Edelman he is. Randy Edelman is one of my clients and probably one of my best friends on the planet. 
even though we fight like cats and dogs every minute of our lives. <laughs> but he is, he's a, what he does, that's not Randy, honey. That's Fred Schneider. But <laughs> from the B 52s. Yes. Mm. What Randy does is he's a film scorer. He scored everything over 100 films, everything from Last of the Mohicans, My Cousin Vinny, Ghostbusters 2. He's one of the best out there. One of the best. And uh, he, we just produced the movie that he scored. And um, he also is, is a, a pop songwriter. Um, he's written for Patti LaBelle, Nelly, mm -hmm. Olivia Newton-John, Dionne Warwick, even Bing Crosby. And um, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. Very brilliant man. So we got him nominated to the New England Hall of Fame. Very well deserved. And first he told me, that's not a real thing. And he went from that's not a real thing to when am I performing and how long? So that's Randy for you. But he's great. He's probably the best musician on the planet. And I and I do not say that with, I mean, I know that's a lot Randy. of That's Randy. That's Randy. Show that picture. That's Randy. <laughs> That's Randy. <laughs> so the thing about Randy also is Randy doesn't necessarily like doing interviews, and you better not ask him a dumb question either, right, Eileen? Well, because he'll is, shut you down. The thing is, he likes doing interviews if you're smart enough to ask him a decent question. If you're not, you're dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. So, uh, Rebel, let's show a couple of photos of these because I want people. There's Leland. So we love Leland. So let's talk about this immediate family. Uh, so Rachel, you saw that. I'm not ter ter sure if Terry saw it, and I don't think Howard saw it. One of the best documentaries I've ever seen, and it's basically on these guys are the only ones, four guys in the world that played on over 4,800 hits. Everybody from uh, Jackson Brown, Phil Collins, Dave Crosby, who's no longer with us, unfortunately, Don Henley, Steve Jordan, Carol King, let's see, who else? Um, David Keith Bowie, Richards, Linda Ronstadt, Michael Jackson, Dolly Parton, I'll help James you Taylor, you. Billy Bob, Neil Young. They are the only ones that played in studio with them and actually gone on tour with them. Yeah. That's what makes them iconic and their immediate family. It's a great documentary. I saw a little bit on the screen the other day because I really wanted to see Denny and talk to the director who's coming on uh, September 19th for us to talk about the immediate family. But Rachel, you remember seeing this documentary on that? Amazing. It's amazing. Did you know... Before you knew that, because I was, I, I had to tell someone, because I hate seeing these great films and no one can see them. So remember seeing this film because now it's coming out. And if you ever see The Wrecking Crew, The Wrecking Crew is on Amazon Prime, and that's based on all the session museums. They were called The Wrecking Crew because they played on Frank Sinatra, Mamas and Poppers, um, The Beach Boys, and all that stuff. So Denny, the director, his dad was the drummer. And so that's how he ended up doing a documentary because he didn't know what his dad did as a little kid. And then he started to meet all these iconic players. If you think of Neil, no, not Neil Young. Um, I forgot what his name was. He's a country artist. He played on this, Glenn Campbell. He, plays one of, he was one of the Wrecking, Wrecking Crew members before he went on on his own. These guys played on all of them on the West Coast, just like the Funk Brothers from Motown. They were actually jazz musicians who played on every single Motown hit. So when you have these guys like this, these are iconic. So from that, Eileen, had Leland, and I never knew who Leland was, but I had always heard his song, so whenever he came on, I was like, he loved coming on the show, and, and I'm just honored, so Eileen, that's what I was thinking of Sunday. I was sitting in the hall, standing there thinking, thank goodness for Eileen and Jimmy Starr and World Star PR with their clients, because we would never have had that connection, and that was at the Sue Wong event, and that's it was right. very, very special. So talk about this. Uh, from Borat, everybody's favorite actor. <laughs> yes. That's Ken. Ken Davidian, he's great. He's Ken great. is great. He's a great guy. Yeah. All right, let's see another photo. All right, this one. That's this Randy is a special Jones. one. That's Randy Jones from the Village People and Mickey Burns. Um, <clears throat> and Mickey Burns has a show in New York and the surrounding areas, a 21-year-old. Um, he's probably interviewed as many or more people in person live and he's uh, got that great show out there yes and that's fred from the b-52s he's a very good friend he's a little crazy but i love him i love him too he's the lead singer eileen, 
Eileen, that's somebody I really would like to meet because I grew up with the B-52s. I love the B-52s. It just reminds me of like... I do too, uh, actually, now. Yeah. This reminds me of high school and stuff. And so I would just I would just love to meet him. Well, I will ask him. Mm -hmm. He is... Um, yeah, I said I would think he has. He's that's technology it. challenged, right? Exactly. <laughs> no, he's not. Well, he is. But I, I would just hang out with him until he got on. But the thing is... He has to have a makeup artist. <laughs> There's always something behind the scenes that people don't know of, and that's one of them. Yes. <laughs> but he's talk a about very this book. Man and very this, fun. This book means a lot to you. Why? Well, because it took me six years to interview Adam Ant, who I love more than life itself, who I will always love. I grew up loving him. I still love him. Yes. And um Yes. I wrote the book because I, I wanted to interview all these like really famous people so that he would give me an interview. And he did six years later. And uh, yeah, so the book is kind of dedicated to him. And, and I finally got an interview with him. And by the way, to this day, he's probably one of the best interviews I've ever done. Talk about why it took you so long to get it. Well... People don't yeah. realize these interviews, you can't get a lot of these people. They were tough then, they're even tougher now, unless you have that right publicist like Eileen from World Star PR, and you have that connection, or else you're not going to get these people. And a lot of people don't understand this, Eileen, do they? Well, you know what? It's a lot of luck, too, and it's a lot of secreting, you know? Like, I just made up my mind I was going to interview him. There was nothing in life going to stop me, nothing. And uh, that finally happened. And I, the funny thing is, I knew him. I met him a couple of times before I interviewed him. And I still couldn't get an interview. And then finally, he didn't love the press. They weren't really kind to him. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. so he didn't really trust too many people. But we did the interview. And the cool thing was, he gave, they gave me his phone number. For, and he was in England, and I was here. And I, I remember standing by the clock. And like, I, I'm never really nervous before an interview. You know, apprehensive, but not nervous. Well, I was so nervous. I was like, oh, my God. And then, you know, finally came time to talk to him. And they told me if he hates your questions, he's going to cut you off after 20 minutes. They gave me a half hour, which is a long interview for press. Because you've got to transcribe all that nonsense. So an hour later, we were still talking. And I'm the one that finally said, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Um, and then he started just repeating the answers to the questions I'd already asked him. He was great. He was great. And um, Billy Idol and my little two little grandchildren, Steve mm -hmm. Stevens, who I did interview finally, but not Billy Idol, still waiting for that. Um, but I'm close. And his real name is William Broad. And I remember that because I signed him up at Tower Video in 1987. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, Eileen, so did you ever, I mean, uh, what, did you have any... Um, uh, let's say connection with Richard Blade from K Rock because these are all my high school like idols. And no. like, K well, K Rock back because I was able to meet Richard Blade, um, at like several events. And like, actually, I was doing a work event where he did he DJed, so it just kind of reminds me of that whole era. So, era, so I was curious. Uh, so. that's my favorite era in life, uh -huh. but no, I don't know him, but <laughs> 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 um, that was at the that was at the um, music hall, the Songwriters Hall of Fame, um, and he's that's Rich from uh, Bon Jovi, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he was really drunk but fun. That is Peter <laughs> Asher. It used to be a group called Peter and Gordon. They did a song called Needles and Pins. I I think even maybe before the Beatles. Well, Peter Asher, believe it or not, is the one that told Leland that whenever he does a song to make sure that his name is on the cover. So um, occasionally, that's occasionally Leland tours with him. And the last time he toured with me was at City Winery and Soho Johnny walked in on him naked. For real. <laughs> that's, that's, Jim, that's Jimmy Webb. Um, you know, he's, he's a big songwriter. Um, I can't think, uh, oh, that's Clive. <laughs> That's an iconic film because how old is Clive? But you know, the, the, yeah, I mean, the Grammy Museum downtown is named after Clive Davis. That's right. That's Sandra Bernhardt. She's a great comedian and a friend. She's also a friend. You know, once you interview these people, you get kind of intimate with them. 
And then when you interview them like 12 times, like her, you get to be besties. Um, and the mm -hmm. last interview I did with her, she said, Eileen, you know what I'm going to say? Just write it. <laughs> 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 That's Deborah Harry. Oh, wow. All That's my Whoopi. idols, my gosh. Go on. It would be. That's Leon. He's a, he's a great client of mine and a great friend, and I love him to death. He was in cool runnings. That's CC Pet. Okay, he was in. That's CC Peniston. She was. She did the song finally, and next to her is one of my clients, Soho Johnny. We love Johnny. So the we thing talk Johnny. about we love Leon. Leon. Women we love, love Leon. So Leon was in Cool Running. He was in um, Waiting um, to Exhale. Mm -hmm. He he played he Jimmy Rock. He did a great job playing him. Yep, he played uh, Little Richie. That's Rosie O'Donnell. She's great, too. Rosie O'Donnell, everyone knows. I met her at the uh, Glad Awards, and she was really nice to me. If I ever Did she bring her son? Say, if I ever hear anyone saying she's a bitch, I'm going to hit them because she is so nice. No, she's not. She's very, very nice. Nicest, nicest lady. That's Fat Joe. <laughs> we did the uh, MTV 35th Anniversary Music Awards. And that's Fat Joe. And that's uh, Flavor Flav, who I love. And he was he was just so much fun. So, yeah. Flav is, that, Flav is interesting to get him a right. That's Tony Orlando, who's sometimes the client, mm -hmm. but probably the nicest guy in the whole entertainment business. Absolutely. Um, and the only guy who got his show canceled with a, one of the highest ratings ever. Yes, that's true. No reason Another for it to be canceled. <laughs> The other guy she just showed before was Akon, and Akon, yeah, that's it. He's probably him and his wife, so nice, so great, um, and um, really, really nice people. I can't even say uh, that. Okay, that that's Alex Golnick. He's a friend. He's from Testament, um, a thrash metal group. He's probably the best thrash metal guitarist on the planet, and he's fun and he's nice. Ah, this guy. <laughs> that's Scott Page from Pink Floyd. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's a very, very dear friend, and will always be. And uh, that's Joey Belladonna from Anthrax, who I love to death. He is also great. Fine, you ever have him on your show? You should. So um, I think we. I think I last spoke with him in 2020. Well, you should have him on your show because he's great. Jimmy just had him last week. He's he's okay. really fun. He's really fun. Okay, so that I is, love this um, photo. Okay, that's Mickey Burns on top. I'm in the middle. <laughs> Idiots. Okay, and um, the, in front of Soho Johnny is um, Felipe Rose from the Village People. And next to him is John Butcher. He's um, he's a musician who was given to me by Leland. He's a really top musician. He's got a he's got a really iconic history too that a lot of people and and I think he lives in yeah. does he live in Nashville? No, no, he lives in Boston. He's um he's a New England boy. Okay. And, so and hold he does so have a cool history. So uh, Rebel, hold that photo. So Howard, if you're there and your connection's yeah. good, tell Eileen who you are, a little bit of your background, and what you're iconic for. Okay, I'm Howard Wiggins. Uh, uh, my son was Cliff Roy Wiggins, who played steel guitar for Eddie Ardell. Uh, the, uh, one of the world's 35 leading interior designers, now retired, uh, now trying to be an actor and break into the movies, and uh, now on movies, review, and more. So. And he's a great dancer. Uh, so, Rachel, let's try Rachel. She might have a second to lag. Tell everybody who you are, including Eileen, because you just never know. If she might, if she likes you, maybe she'll write about you. <laughs> Hello, Eileen. I hope you write about me one day. That's. I hope to be, Hi. you know, at that, <laughs> that level. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know if you guys can hear me. My, my, the audio tonight sounds a little off, but um, I'm Rachel Roberts Recipes. I have a morning show, coffee talk, and I, you know, there's other, a lot of other things I'm working on. Um, I have a TV. Show show that I'm, I'm shooting episodes for Brian and can he's living at my director's house so that, that's kind of interesting another whole story um anyway I'm a lot of fun I'm, I'm weird I'm kind of funky oh, some, I make puppy cakes 
for dogs. Um, How cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm a chef here in Houston, but I do a lot more. I love this boost class. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, so talk about talk about you going to boost because you have you, you didn't do Pilates before. What's that doing to you? No, I'm loving it. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving. Like you know what? I feel so strong and good. I'm really digging the um the Pilates boost Pilates. Terry. Yeah, it's good. Hey, uh, where's Jimmy? Is he out on that horrible bus? <laughs> yeah, he is. And I'll talk about that later. Uh, Terry, okay. you might be on mute. Oh, sorry. I was on mute. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, hi, everybody. Go ahead. Terry Marie. Terry Marie. Um, uh, I've been with Brian for over, oh, gosh, let me see, since uh, for seven, wait, how many years now, Brian? Since 2014. Eight. We're on year eight now, halfway through. Year eight. Uh, so um, I do several things. One of the things I love to do is I love to do celebrity red carpet interviews, and I do those for Brian for all the major like gifting suites and, and Hollywood events here. I absolutely love it, Eileen. So, you know, sometimes I like to pick your brain. Maybe you can, like, give me some tips on it. I've been doing it for a while, but I can always learn from the best, you know. And then um, <laughs> I'm, a fitness, I'm a fitness competitor. I've won several trophies. I was, uh, oh, shoot. I was uh, Miss uh, L.A. Um, I mean, okay. So I won L.A. Fitness Universe. Um, I won first place. That show was in 2016. I, were, I won Muscle Beach sec, second 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 overall first in my division in 2014 um i've won npc in my division a couple of times so if i have several award-winning bodybuilder i don't think of myself of that but yeah <laughs> and then i um uh, i still train um i would like to do another fitness competition brian knows that i want to motivate women like you know over 40 because i'm in my early 50s now and how to you know keep mind body and everything young and then see i'm also uh done a lot of acting i'm in a couple of music videos and now and I've, i can say this now so i'm partnering with my friend i i, I do day trading and so he has a, a class he's doing so i'm going to help him be promoting his marketing on that and we're going to be doing videos on uh day trading so i'm going to be working with him on that so i added that to my list of stuff and then i'm also in a medical sales rep so i'm very busy you are <laughs> so that's me. you are that's me. yeah <laughs> So do you want to hear a funny story? Yes. you got tons Always. of them. Okay, so I do go to the gym, okay? So I had a I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Since I'm, I don't know how old. But anyway, so I go to the gym, and I have a trainer named Dominic. Now, Dominic is one of these little short guys with big arms. And they used to <coughs> actually call us Dominic Stikes because, I mean, he used to make us lift. Stupid amounts of, <laughs> stupid amounts of weight. I used to leg press 1,100 pounds. So mm -hmm. we get in this competition, right? Mm -hmm. And I went to a Rick Springfield concert that night, and I was tired, and I didn't want to compete. And he's like, just do it. I, like, had no sleep, nothing. I said, oh, all right. So moral of the story, myself and another girl, we were the only two girls who competed. We came in second and third. Dominic <laughs> came in 17th. So that's my story for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So he, I, I, mean, I know what it, I know what it's like to compete, and it's rough, <laughs> especially with you know, it's not, anyway. You know, you know what I always tell everybody? It's like people always think, oh, the gym and the exercise is the hardest part. The hardest part is the diet when you do stage oh, when you when you're competing on stage because it's so strict. But you know what? I really like what it does to you because it makes you very disciplined, and it's 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 one of the biggest challenges I've ever done is to go on a. a, a a diet before a fitness competition or what's called prep um, and meal prep your food. And it's, oh gosh, it's not a lot of fun, but the reward at the end of it is it's great, you know, to challenge yourself that way. To me, the biggest challenge is walking into the gym. Once oh, I'm in, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, Eileen. Yeah. Uh, well, we got to show this picture of Howard first. So Howard, I love this top. This is one of the best tops that I've seen that you have that I love. Talk about that. Uh, that's really one of the first jackets I bought. Uh, that's that's probably about five, six years old now. But I do get compliments every time I wear it. That is the most popular one. Yes, sir. 
Eileen, do you remember who your first client was? Ever? Yeah. Um, I do. I do. My first famous client was actually Scott Page. But my very first client, oh, my God. Um, you know what it is? We got a couple at once. It wasn't like we just had one client. We had we had a few of them. And um, one of my first ones was Ricky Rebel. I and, know Ricky uh, really well. Oh, my gosh. He's a personal friend of mine. Yeah, tell him I said hello. I will. I will. Yes. Oh, my gosh. How, how crazy. Okay. Okay, and my and then remember no from Revolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was, and then we had a, a guy named. They all came on together like the same week. Um, and then I forgot his name, but he was cute. He, 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 um, Christopher, Christopher. Um, he um, he's a singer, and he had, I forget his last name offhand, and and that's too bad because that was the name of his group. But um, he flies airplanes and stuff, and he's very cool. So those were really my first. And then Scott Page. Oh, okay. We had, um, oh, God, Deborah White. She was one of our first ones. She's a uh -huh. singer, right? Yeah. Yep. I think, uh, I think I know who she is. Yep, she was one of our first ones. And, uh. They all kind of come together. That's Elvis Duran, by the way, and Colin next to him and me in the middle. Elvis Duran is a presenter. Um, he does the morning show for Z100 in New York. And he does Very all the Very popular radio topics. station. Yeah. That, okay, you ready? That. I, I think I might have taken the photo for that. No, 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 no unless have. Billy did. <laughs> I took one, and I think Billy came and took the others. You might have taken this one. But, um. The guy, the ball guy next to me is Kenny Arnoff, and then Sue Wong. One of the best drummers in the world, five yeah. years in a row. Mm hmm That's true. And then next to him is Sue Wong, and uh, next to Kenny on the other side is was a client of mine, um, our Rose, and next to her, next to her is John Wa is uh, Chris Wise from um, Hollywood Vampires. And next to him is, I don't know. <laughs> and and the guy, <laughs> do you remember who he was? I really don't. I don't remember. I, I remember him being there. I don't remember who he was, though. Yeah, I don't either. Well, he couldn't have been important. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Talk about this book. That is Precious Little Devils. That's a fiction book. And that was, um, that I did... Because I just loved it. You know, when you when you write a book, it's kind of lonely. But it's also, like, exciting, like an, invent, an adventure, because you never know what's going to come out of your brain. Um, I never plan what I write. Even my articles. I don't really plan them. They just happen. Let me start. Get out of my vision here. <laughs> His face thing just popped down. <laughs> So this is um, this was also this weekend. This his name is Tokyo Mares. Um, he's a world-renowned jazz classic and everything like that. He was doing awesome. a thing for a high-end watch company uh, called Revolver, but also Jaguar Liqueur. And he did a golden racial music show, and that was the magazine. To him, to my left, um, is his manager Andrew. And one of the representatives of the, the high-end clock. I mean, these these watches are man. The, the the least amount goes for like twenty thousand dollars. It starts there. Very very eclectic, very iconic, and very nice. Now he's a friend. And this is from Dances with Wolves. I mean, Dances with Films, the the film festival in Hollywood uh, this past weekend, which is still going on. And they they had the best turnout that I've ever seen anybody coming out because film festivals are kind of slow, except if it's opening night and closing night. And then so this was Denny. Uh, um, the director of the Wrecking Crew of an Immediate Family, Tedesco. Um, so he's got Steve Pastel to the left and uh, Danny Kucha, uh in the middle of that. And that's for the screening of Immediate Family, which was sold out. And they were very, very happy about that because these things, you know, when he was working on it during COVID in 2020, it takes a long time for these films to come on. People don't realize you start something and you never know when they're going to come. You just got to stick with it. So now he has distribution. He's not going to say who it is, but he'll probably say it. Well, he will say it on the show because it's almost there. But it is one of the best documentaries that I've ever seen. And it's an honor to get to know these people. 
um, you think of these people bringing back people's careers. So what, after Don Henley left the Eagles, you know, it was, it was Denny who came in and wrote that real, that great song for him. Um, I can't remember the song. It'll come to me later. But just looking at these, all these iconic songwriters, these people playing on these things is just amusing. So that's that. So, Rachel, talk about this. What, what have you been making lately and what's been going on with you in that Houston weather? Because I just know it's hot. It's very hot, um, but I'm outside smoking stuff all the time. So, And I got this new from a, a fan sent me one of those Sear Pros, which is like, um, it's like a, like a, you know, a blowtorch, but it's, you know, badass. So anyway, I'm out there smoking um, pork belt. Flank steak, fajitas. Um, you know, we got uh, uh, Fourth of July is coming up next week, so that will be huge. I'm gonna do some barbecue, bourbon baked beans. I throw the bourbon in there. <laughs> of course, you're going. Um, yeah, uh, it's yeah, and it's some Mexican street corn. You know, because I live in a little town in Mexico called Houston. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's no joke. I heard, heard fire, like gunshots last night in my backyard. It was like, bam, 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 bam. Right in my backyard. So anyway, wow. it's exciting. Yay. Hey, Howard, talk about this. What are you doing July 4th? And talk about what you're wearing and what room you're in. Uh, I really don't have any plans for July 4th. But I'm in my guest bedroom, my collection of cameos behind me here. Uh, this, you know, I'm it's always wearing my pearls, usually that for you, Brian, you like the pearls. So I do actually. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's the guest bedroom, basically. So. It looks beautiful. And then you're always changing things up, aren't you? Oh, constant. Well, I'm not, I add a lot all the time. You know, if you watch my Facebook, there'll be a, Whatever I bought that week, it's going to be posted, and and I collect a lot of art. I have ever since I was 16 years old. So, uh, but I don't make mistakes. I've got everything I've ever bought. I mean, the only reason I'll ever sell anything is if I find something better and I can trade up. But that's it. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. Thank you, Eileen. Talk about this. Um, what is it like to be you? What's what's your average day like? <laughs> Well, during the summer, it's different than during the winter. The thing is, I have nine grandchildren, and and two of them, I have to wake up at five in the morning, go to the house, put them on the bus, but I'm done by eight. Okay, so wow, I usually I usually get at least three or four texts and phone calls before nine, and they're not from my LA people. They're usually from unless it's Randy. Randy will text any time of the day and night. Sleeps. And I don't either, really, because there's really no time to sleep. So, <laughs> but every, you know what, Brian, every day that I live is different. There's no routine, no pad, no nothing. Just whatever happens, happens. And it, it could be different every day. You know, a, a couple of Me times, too. sometimes I plan things like I plan to be on this show. But if I don't have anything planned, I just fly by the seat of my pants and see what happens. You know, I write if I feel like it. Um, I interview if I well, you know, I write for Get Out magazine. So I just interviewed you know who I interviewed? Um Diane Warren. Oh, I love Diane. She's not easy to get. Well, not well, outside of you. Well, she's yeah. pretty easy for me. <laughs> but um Let's see, her publicist actually, is Jeff Sanderson, really nice guy. Yes. But I'm actually working on a project with, with Diane now with Belinda Carlisle, so that's kinda cool. So We're trying to make he, her song the biggest gay anthem on the planet. You know whose song could have been Diana Ross's "I'm Coming Out." That could have been that. That could and instead, have been. and instead, Cher comes and takes it over. I thought it was one of the biggest mistakes, and Niall Rogers from Chic would have said, "Go with it, take that audience." Because when you have that gay audience and you keep them, that's a great thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Niall is another one of my favorites. Um, story about Niall, okay? I was trying to get an interview with him, trying to get one, trying to get one, figure out I'll, I'll never get one. And Franny, his assistant, 
you know, she was like, whenever I can, whenever I can. This went on for about a year. Then all of a sudden I get a call from her. Can you interview Niall in 10 minutes? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was kind of cool. That happened sometimes. So, yeah. How do you find time to write with all this stuff? And, it, and people, look, if they don't know who Niles is, think of Sheik, a great songwriter, great player. Um, but, you know, he was hot. So Sister Sledge, all in the family, he and uh, Bernard Edwards, when Bernard was alive, they wrote all those songs for them. Uh, Diana Ross, uh, they did a lot of stuff. Sheik, uh, La Freak, yep. and if you, if uh, Howard may know, Rachel may know, if you don't know what Freak Out meant, it was because they couldn't get into Studio 54 and it didn't mean freak out. It meant F something else at that point. Exactly. And then all of a sudden, they started to get in to go there. And one of the best iconic songwriters was that. So David Bowie, Let's Dance. Nile Rodgers wrote that for David Bowie. That's and correct. that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So th that's why these guys are iconic. There are not a lot of them left anymore. So anytime you can interview these people, if you get a chance, go for it. Because go for it. they're all up in age now. And you just never know. Right, Eileen? Well, you know what? My clients, a lot of them are, you know, they're in their 70s and older, but you know what? They're going to live a long time, especially especially people like Randy, because he's me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's probably the nicest person in the world, but, you know, he's all these people, Scott, all of them, they're brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. And, um, and they have so much to give and so much to offer. And they're all still working and they're all still writing and they're all still playing and they're all still having fun. You know, it's not about the money with them so much anymore. It's about having fun. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and if they bring you along for the ride, it's even more fun. It's great. Exactly. Talk about yeah. how did you and Jimmy Star hook up to, to create World <coughs> Star PR? How did that come Okay, about? this is a good one. So I wrote the book, Precious Little Devils. And it was actually Adam Ant's publicist that said, I know this guy, do you want to be on his show with your book? And I was like, okay. So the minute I met them, I, Ron thought he knew me from like one of the gay bars. Um, and he probably did because I, I, I was engaged to a gay man. So we, um, we went to gay bars together. And I probably did know Ron. But anyway, we became friends like immediately. The next week, they lived in Pennsylvania at the time. The next week they came out to, I have a house on Fire Island in Cherry Grove. And they came out there with us. And then the next week they came out and then we started to meet in the city and do events. And then we were, we had Ricky Rebel who told us how much his publicist charged for like my interviews and Jimmy's interviews. And we're like, wait a minute, they charge you and you pay them? We're like, no, 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 that's not cool. Mm -hmm. But Jimmy and I decided that we had more contacts than any publicist because people always went after us, you know, for interviews. So we said, let's just start a PR company. And within maybe three days, we had World Star PR. And within the first month, we had 10 clients. So, and we've never had an argument or a disagreement in all the years we've been working, not one. That is so not cool easy is to do <laughs> at you all. You know what? It's it's not my, it's Jimmy's doing because Jimmy's so laid back and easy, you know, um, and respectful. And he, you know, he's just, he's one of my favorite people on the planet. And and the thing is, he'll always ask, do you want to do, we, we have to agree on everything. And we always do. That's the weird thing. We just agree. You know, we might not agree politically or, or about friends or whatever but you know as far as business and our clients we just always agree it's a weird thing and and like i say i i my hat goes off to jimmy because it's probably because of him he's way more laid back than i am <laughs> you well know, I, you're I you're clients. definitely you're definitely on it when it comes to a lot of stuff i've never met anybody who's been more on it than you even some of these top level ones i'm like they don't put in the work of what you do you make it look seamless if, if I could say that word, and you do. And I'm looking at them. These people don't answer the phone anymore. They don't even put their numbers down. They think they're better, and they don't realize they're not going to be at a Showtime or Warner Brothers for the rest of their life, you know? You know what? I Every day I wake up, and I'm, like, excited, like, to go through the day because I, I love what I do. love my clients, all of them. Um, I love writing about them. I mean, we, you know, we have drama and stuff, but 
the drama isn't us. You know, we're always like breaking up the drama. You know what I mean? Like trying mm -hmm. to put out the fires or whatever. But within the first year, we, we won the um, the Nashville Best PR from the Nashville Times, the best PR people on the planet. So that was pretty cool. That's pretty impressive since neither one of you live in Nashville, you know. That's not easy. I know, right? <laughs> How cool is that? That's very cool. I mean, if you put a number on how many clients you have, what would be the guess now? Because you're always getting more. I don't even know the total. We usually have about 20 at a time. You, you got know, more they, than they that. What are you talking about? I mean, we have clients like Howard Bloom, who's like oh, yeah. the smartest man in the world. I mean, he's been our client for like four or five years nonstop. Um, um, Rocky. Rocky Kramer. Rocky Kramer, he's been our client nonstop. Wendy, Wendy Stewart Kaplan, you know, nonstop. Um, really, Leland mm -hmm. Scott, and and you know, Randy's now going on. To be, well, he's over two years now. He's, you know, been like three years with Randy, and um, it, most of our people, Simonetta, they all stay with us. You know? I like but, Simonetta. Yeah. Yes, Simonetta. I, 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 we, we have a great connection when you can reach her. It, it, so if people don't know who Simon edited, let's see. She's got uh, she's one of the best influencers, one of the best models in the world. She's in the top five when it comes to Forbes. And I forgot her favorite charity. That charity, it's very special for her. It's something to do uh, with it's kids. Called wishing, it's called Wishing Mall. And what she does is she goes to places like Africa and creates jobs for women and gives oh. the little kids ice cream that have never had ice cream before. She's, she's cool. And she got like 33 million followers just on Instagram. She is one of the best influence in, in the world. She's in top five in the world. That's one of your clients. And then when I think when Howard Bloom, yeah. So for Rachel and Howard, uh, Terry, I think, was on the show. Howard, Howard, one of the best publicists ever and mm -hmm. one of the smartest people ever. Uh -huh. So you think of Michael Jackson, Prince, uh, Madonna, Bob Seger. Um, who the hell Bob else <laughs> Bob he had Molly, everybody, um, everybody he had everybody. during the heyday. Alice, Alice Cooper, Billy Idol, everybody. Joan, he, he created Joan Jett's, uh, she got turned down 29 times and it was Howard who did that. He saved the films. Oh, Prince was his other one. And Queen. all Prince's clients. Queen, Queen. yep, um, one of the best PRs. Hitler, Billy Joel. Um, all of them, that was him. Okay. And so if I have Howard on, you get a chance to ask one question because he's got this memory of you ask him one question and it's literally a book that he will tell you the story and mm -hmm. how everybody came on from how he got Prince, why he turned down the Jacksons and all that stuff. Rachel, who are you talking to? Kelly. 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 Oh, oh, hello, Kelly. I was like, who is she talking to over there? Hi. But it's also, it's Sorry. it's one of those things where when we have Howard on, um, he's not only is he one of the smartest people I've ever met in the world, he's just a history of who he's created. If he, ever, if he were to take your career, you would be famous overnight. So everybody who saw The Longest Yard, he saved that movie, Burt Reynolds. If you ever saw Prince, uh, what was it, Purple Rose? Uh, he mm -hmm. saved that movie from being trash and all that stuff when he had Prince as a client. That's that's who he is. So any of Jimmy and Eileen's clients, they are world renowned and they are one of the best in the world at what they do. And I really like that. So again, it's an honor and a pleasure to always meet them when it comes to stuff. Rachel Roberts, give your social media links. We got about five minutes left. Rachel Roberts, recipes, and coffee talk and balance seven water. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 hey. Yeah, but hey, Brian, did you see they have a new one for you can put this one in your coffee? And also, they're, they're now saying it's okay to give it to your doggies, your fur babies. I have been, I've been giving it a little bit to Jimmy's dog. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I know you have. You sprayed Morris Dottie's $400 facial spray on the damn dog. <laughs> I will do that. I will do that. Good. No, I know all about it. <laughs> uh, Terry, give you social media uh, links. Terry Marie nonstop on all social media platforms. And then my website is terrymarieofficial.com. 
And Brian, when are we going to go visit Dr. Darsani? We've got to make we've got to make a day out there while you're here. I'm just waiting for him to call me back. Okay. Yeah. And then Howard. Howard Wiggins, Facebook, plain and simple. I'll be turning 70 in September 15. So wow. I'm looking forward to that. Howard, I want to come to your birthday party because you're so cute. Yeah. If you'll dance with me, do it. <laughs> I oh, love you got it. My birthday is July 30th. Oh, yeah, yours is coming Mine's up. Mine's August. Mine's in August, August and then 14th. Mine is actually Thursday, June 29th. Happy birthday. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> um, Watch Tina's dogs. Don't don't even ask. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. That's funny. That's funny. Oh, so Eileen, this is important for us. So those rainbow colors, those who were created uh, for LGBTQ. For those people who who've been lost in one way, who haven't who haven't been able to get their stories out or anything like that, that was created for them. Uh, Montague Pope Lebeau created that. That's why that is special. And that's I love the that. Artist Ranch. Yeah, well, we think it's better than their actual emblem. So all for those artists, you know, I will, you will, we will. You know, you climb the mountain of tolerance and justice and equality and judgments to be a better future. Those things are what the Artist Ranch is always about. And our event will be coming up July 26th. On a Wednesday in Inglewood, we're going to do it. Dance performance, artists, poets, everything like that. That's what we're working on right now. And, um, Terry, talk about where you went this past weekend. Because you got a uh, chance to go out. You should mention that at least. Oh, I wish I... Uh, next weekend, I'll show the videos. I still have to post some pictures. I went to the Rose LA in Taliban, Malibu, which was a big event. Just kind of showcasing different uh, rosé wines, champagnes. Uh, there was live music. Um, it was big outdoors on a ranch out in Malibu, Calabasas area. Um, they What was neat about, the, I think the, the highlight of the event is they had a helicopter that dropped a bunch of rose petals off on the whole venue, which was oh, that's really nice. cool. It was really cool. And there was a little bit, there was like different areas where you could take pictures. I did like a little TikTok video. Um, I haven't had a chance to put everything else up because I've had like, uh, uh, you know, just some distractions. <laughs> I'm working through, but I would be putting those up by the end of the week. But it was Rose LA in Calabasas and Melbourne. And um, hey, Rebel, I don't know if we have something for Howard, uh, one of his videos this week or not, but I don't know. We might. If not, oh, actually, you know what? We had one I photo. I wish we did because I really enjoy Howard's dancing. He's always wonderful. All right, Howard, in two weeks, we're not going to be here July 4th, but in two weeks. All right. Uh, we'll come back. We'll, I'll, I'll surprise you with two new ones and you'll tell us what they are. Because dancing, okay. Eileen, is one of his greatest things. And he loves to do that. It doesn't matter if he's by himself. doesn't matter if anybody comes up. They all want to jump up with him. God knows why. No, I know why. Because he's a Dapper Don. That's why. But I it's one it. of those things where we love that. And I went, um, I, went to an, I went to an antique show in Atlanta and I was at the eating breakfast and I asked the owner if I can just get up and dance. So we had one of the waitresses dance with me and all of a sudden another lady comes up and starts dancing with me and it's all unplanned. But I love that. It's so exciting. So how fun. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not I'm un, I'm uninhibited. I'll do whatever. <laughs> <You know. laughs> I love it. So um Eileen let's let's kinda end with this. What does it take to be one of your future clients with you and Jimmy? Because I, I don't know if you guys just take anybody on, but your prices are really good. They um, are. But, but you also have a great clientele. What does it take to be one of your clients? Um, well, desire and a dream. That's good. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rachel, you're raising your hand. I, yeah, yeah, because y'all can't hear me, so I'm just going to clap. <laughs> And, oh, a, a desire, a dream, and, and the need to have fun. Because we yes. don't do it if it's not fun. Oh, I always have fun. <laughs> I always think, I just want to leave this with something, that you are most successful in your dreams. It's not about money. It's about doing something you enjoy. I always think that people need to not forget that. It's not about big things. It's about enjoying your art. Or what art Agreed. you have off the world. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. 
Eileen, I'll uh, give you social media links for anybody, and what's a word of advice for those people who want to break into the field? Because it's different. It, the, the whole business has changed. It's not what it was years ago. Those days are gone. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, you know what? Like I said, have a dream. Have a dream and really want that dream to come true. And you know what? If you keep at it and you're relentless, it absolutely will. And my social media is... Um, Eileen Shapiro 3 on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook is just Eileen Shapiro and my website is Eileen Shapiro rocks. And with that, I'm glad that she made it on because she was always going to come, but you just never know if you get a last minute call from one of those clients because she puts out fires. When I mean she puts out fires, <laughs> she puts out fires. I'm not kidding. And it doesn't matter if it's early in the morning or late at night, she puts them out. So thank everybody, Rachel Roberts, Chef Rachel Roberts from Houston, Texas, Howard yeah. Wiggins from Nashville, Tennessee's nonstop, Terry Marie from California. And as I always say, have a good night tonight, a better day tomorrow. If you see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours. Please give them one of yours. Please give them one of yours because the world needs it. I'm Brian Sebastian. This is Movie Reviews and More, and we will see you in two weeks. <laughs>